and they're related to... The house of David runs the politics of the nation, okay? But the, but the house of uh, Aaron, the priesthood, they r- run the religious side of things, if you like. And the two cross over and are connected. So when the house of David rises, so does the, house, so does the priesthood. That's what's coming. And this is going to become, happen when, at this time of earthquakes that we've been reading about. Okay, the earthquakes and the destruction that are coming upon the world, uh, they're, they're to announce the raising up of Israel. Remember, we read about Joshua. Joshua uh, was buried in the place called Gaash, which means quake, shaking. Okay, so he's, so when he when when what he represents rises from Mount Ephraim, when Ephraim rises up, when the lost Ephraim is the leader of the lost tribes, Ephraim is going to be raised up, and the story and, and when he does, Eliezer is also re- raised up. Now, I just want to go to John chapter uh, eleven and just read through it. Shall we read the whole lot? There's rather a lot. Maybe we'll just read the last. So many. Let's just read the last little bit. In Isaiah, in, in John chapter 50, uh, 11, verse 54. And jo- jo- oh, let's just uh, go through here. In John 11, 54, we have a very interesting, a very interesting uh, account. Now, just read it. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near the wilderness into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. Now this is just after he's raised Lazarus. Now this is the only place in the entire New Testament where it mentions the name Ephraim. This is significant. It's not just a detail. And it says Ephraim went to the wilderness. He went to the place near the wilderness. Mm. Where is, if you read Ezekiel 34, God says to the house of Israel, I'm going to gather you to the wilderness, to the wilderness of the people. Mm. Now, he's going, now, when he's gathering the house of Israel, Ephraim's the leader of Israel, of the house of Israel. He's the leader of the ten tribes. Again, Ephraim's not from the Jews. He's not from the Judah. He's from the lost tribes. So what, this is a prophecy about the raising up of the lost tribes. When, when Jesus has just raised Lazarus, and Lazarus is going off telling the Jews all about the Messiah. Mm. And now Jesus, so Jesus is essentially, Yeshua is sending Eliezer, Lazarus, to the Jews. So he's raising the Kohanim, mm. and, and they're speaking to them. But, but then Jesus personally goes to his firstborn son, which is not Judah, it's Ephraim. It says, Ephraim is my firstborn. It says that in scripture. So Yeshua is sending a servant to see the Judah. But he's, sending, he's going personally to Ephraim mm-hmm. to raise up his firstborn son. So th- this is happening when Israel has gone to the wilderness of the people. And, this is, and that's why it mentions here that Yeshua is going to, a pl- in verse 54, a place near the wilderness. Okay, this is pr- prophecy, and it's saying that when it's time to raise up the lost tribes, I'm going to raise up Eliezer, Lazarus first, the Kohanim, the priesthood, and at that same time, I'm going to ra- I'm going to Ephraim. I'm going to Ephraim. So, so this is a blueprint for the future. And when is this going to happen? It's going to happen when these earthquakes are occurring, and because because. Eliezer was buried close to Joshua in a place called Gaash, which means earthquake. Okay, so this is prophecy. And so so this is a blueprint for how God's going to raise up the lost tribes. And it's Yeshua that's doing it. It's Yeshua, the resurrection, that's raising up Israel. You see, for 2,000 years, Yeshua's been gathering in the nations, but he's been gathering in the lost tribes as well. And that was one of his purposes to br- uh, to raise up the lost sheep, to bring in the lost sheep of the house of Judah. No, to bring in the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, 
Now, uh, the church began with the Jews, and many Jews believed, but the majority of them didn't. And the leaders rejected Yeshua. Well, there's coming a time when they will receive him. But we're about to come into a time when the, God brings these massive earthquakes to bear. And this is at the same time that Damascus is being destroyed. Jacob is being made thin. The earth is being emptied out of its inhabitants. Israel is a bit like an olive tree that's cut down, where all the berries are lost except for a few. So we're coming into a time of severe judgment. And I, I hope to somehow prepare some people with an understanding of this, that this, the judgment that's coming in some ways is greater than the judgments in Revelation. In, in the sense of the loss of life. The loss of life that's coming shortly is going to be massive. But the hope is great because the, the end result will be that God will start again with a remnant of the people from the nations and from Israel. Mm. Okay, then they'll corrupt themselves with the, uh, in, in, by the time of the tribulation. So this is what's coming. Mm. So let's, let's, the, the, here, here is a picture of the tomb of Eliezer, what is believed to be the tomb of Eliezer. And it's in a place uh, near a town called Itamar. And Itamar was, um, uh, they had some very bad times a, a year or so back where uh, Palestinian, uh, uh, young Palestinian men went in there and slaughtered a family, uh, the Fogel family. Uh, but the, the, and the town that they came from, uh, the Arab town that they came from, actually contains the burial chambers, according to Jewish tradition, of, of Eliezer. So this is the actual area when it said that uh, in Mount that there was that that Eliezer was buried in a place called uh, a, a place near in Mount Ephraim. This is the place in this picture right here, mm -hmm. and here's another picture of it during the day, and uh, these are young Jewish uh, uh, settlers, and they're just. Uh, uh, and they're praying for the restoration of the Kohanim, the restoration of the Levitical priesthood. But unbeknown to them, the Levitical priesthood, the leader of them, Eliezer, is going to be a witness to the Mashiach, who's none other than Yeshua. Remember in the book of Acts that many priests turned to the Lord? Okay, but they were blind up until his death. But after he rose from the dead... Uh, and uh, his uh, and uh, his his name and his word was preached. Many of the priests turned to the Lord. Okay, so the priesthood uh, is going to be a witness to the Lord, and and uh, we're nearing the time for that to happen. So, in conclusion, Israel is rising through judgment, and these. Uh, and this judgment includes amazing, earth-shaking, earth-overturning, earth-emptying earthquakes. And it could be that there is a lot of fires going on uh, because it says glorify the Lord in the fires, all you isles of the earth. And if you look above Australia, all the Indonesian islands and all of those islands that follow all around the uh, the ring of fire, the ring of fire, uh, it could be that, that that it's referring to that area. If you have volcanoes erupting, because volcanoes and earthquakes are very much related. So when you have volcanoes erupting, you often have earthquakes associated with it. It's all the same sort of stuff going on under the surface, the, the magma and the lava or whatever you want to call it. So Israel is rising through judgment, and that judgment includes mighty earth-shaking earthquakes. So that's all for our talk about earthquakes. And I hope that's been of uh, uh, some value to you. Thank you, Rory. No worries. I had a question. Yep. Uh, you're saying Eliezer is going to be risen up again now. I'm going to watch the second time. He actually died. He was raised from the dead, but he must have died a second time. Does it mention yeah, that? Yeah, that's right, that's right. That's right. And that may be prophetic too. Um, 
What do you mean he was raised the second time? What do you mean? Well, he, he, he was raised for the dead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but he probably he would have died again a second time. Yeah, probably he was wasn't. Raised again. Well, he wouldn't have died. Well, unless he was raised in his glorified body, um, yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, so it's like that little girl that was, you know, the little girl no, that died. Well, would she, she wouldn't have been raised in glory. She would have been raised in just a natural body. She was raised in a natural body. That's right. So, okay, so when he was raised, because he, it said give her food. So he came to the natural. Raised the glorified body. What happened then? Where did he go? Well, you know, we can eat in our spiritual body because Yeshua could eat yeah, but a then fish. Where did he go? Did he leave the planet? What, what? No, 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 no. He would have he would have been raised in his natural body, unglorified body, but but so he would have died again, most likely. He probably died a natural death like everyone else. That's well, right. I want to kill him. Hmm. through 